How often do you play the what-if game, pondering decisions made in your past, for better or worse, that have led to your current reality, or taking a look at decisions made not judging by your family and friends that have led to their current reality, and in some instances, including your reality along the way? Tammy Nicolini, a physical education elementary school teacher in Eagleswood and the current women's head basketball coach here at Barnegat High School, has been pondering a series of what-ifs, not just made by her, but by her family, in a story that she's sharing for the first time outside her family and some close friends with all of you. A story that begins 53 years ago in Vietnam. An Tu was born, known today as Tammy Tu Nicolini, while her father was serving in the U.S. Marines during the Vietnam War. While serving the second of his three tours in Vietnam, Staff Sergeant Charles Hoff met a woman who later became pregnant and gave birth to An Tu, his third daughter, with the older two waiting for their dad back home in the U.S. with their mom and Hoff's wife. Faced with a personal dilemma, Sergeant Hoff cared for the child and placed her in the Sacred Heart Orphanage in Da Nang after An's mother died defending her from a grenade that went off in their village. He would go and visit his infant daughter in the orphanage when he could while trying to stay alive on the battlefields, including one moment in particular that was indeed a what-if moment that, if it had gone the other way, would have altered everything forever. His unit was under attack, being shot at by Viet Cong snipers as they tried to leave the area in a helicopter. Each of them jumped out to try and avoid being shot and killed. Most of them didn't survive the fall. Sergeant Hoff, who would later earn three Purple Hearts, survived the fall, but then hoped that the Viet Cong wouldn't realize he was still alive, as they walked on by, checking each and every Marine on the ground. He was very fortunate when he was wounded, and when he fell out of the helicopter, he landed face down. So, you know, at that time, the Viet Cong would came over to check to make sure that, you know, that enemy, so to speak, was dead, and he just laid there lifeless so that they thought he was dead. The war changed Sergeant Hoff's life forever. A proud man, a proud Marine who struggled emotionally, never recovered from the things he saw and heard during the war in Vietnam, leading to a PTSD diagnosis and leaving him with no desire to ever go back there again. I can remember as a kid, there was times he would, he, the thunder and the lightning, he could sit outside for hours. And, and I used to, when I, when I was younger, at first I'm like, Dad, it's, you know, it's thunder and it's lightning and it's pouring. And he'd sit on, you know, on the porch and, and he would tell us that, and especially me, um, it reminded him of being over there. And like it would rain for like days and, you know, they'd be out, you know, in the trenches, literally in, you know, the different places and, and just, you know, the thunder, the lightning and, and, and just the sound of it and, you know, all the, the fire going on over there. Following the attack, Sergeant Hoff spoke with his wife back home while in Vietnam, he worked on bringing home their newest addition to the family, doing so when An was 19 months old. My mother was um, was open arms and accepting of me and said, bring her back as long as she's here and she's safe. And um, so it was, you know, it was a wonderful thing because without, it would have made things much more difficult if she wasn't accepting of me and, and she had said, you know, you can't bring her back here and, you know, um, but it was, it was awesome. I mean... Without that, that right there, that one little piece was probably the most important piece that it made him, it made it easy for my father to bring me back. Most of Sergeant Hoff's memories of Vietnam are dark, seeing and hearing the terror reigning all over. But there are two things he brought home that he loved, the images of the beauty of the country itself and bringing home his daughter, a gift he cherished every day. He would always say to me all the time, and I can remember this from being a little girl, the best thing that ever happened in that war was you. In the years that followed, while growing up with an American family, Tammy felt comfortable and protected from any public scorn, verbal insults, and hate speech because her family always had her back. One of the really fond memories I have of my mom is when she would take me places and we'd go places as a family and they'd say, wait, that's your daughter? And she goes, yes, that's my daughter. And she would make it very a matter of fact. And um, that kind of, you know, gave me a foundation so to speak. But there was definitely adversity um, growing up as, uh, you know, like, well, wait, you don't look like her. How is she your sister? The great thing is that my siblings never said ever, well, that's my half sister. You know, she is from Vietnam or, you know, she's, you know, so, you know, there was that, there was never that, um, at least from them. So that made it 
made it so much easier for me. But there definitely was, well, you know, you know, she's not your sister. And people would come out and say, like, that's not your sister. She can't be your sister. And the, uh, the beauty was is that my sisters and my siblings has never made me, as a little child, feel that I was any different. While not a sole focus of her life, she does self-reflect on the what-ifs that have altered her reality in every way since she was born. If he would have gotten stationed somewhere else or if, you know, he had gotten my biological mother pregnant and then left and had no idea and that you know those kind of things also happened a lot as well um, yeah I mean I surely wouldn't be here I mean I wouldn't you know be living this life that I'm living certainly the decisions her father made impacted her life in every way imaginable but as she looks back with gratefulness and love at what he did and why she also reflects on a man who is much bigger than those several life altering decisions I'm probably most grateful and thankful to him just in general for being being an upstanding man you know and a human for the fact that you know he, he's taken responsibility for you know things that he has done and um, and taking the responsibility for having me and saying hey you know what I'm bringing her back with me and I'm going to raise her I'm going to give her a better life um, so you know that in itself says a tremendous amount. Whether it was playing field hockey, softball, or basketball at Southern Regional High School, sports was an outlet for Nicolini to find herself and fit in because, like for many, sports is a break from reality. I kind of felt that was the platform and the place that nothing mattered. It didn't matter what your skin, the color of your skin was. It didn't matter who you were. Um, and it was, you know, you're just an athlete. Tammy later married her high school sweetheart, Jim Nicolini, and they've raised three daughters. Bianca, Michaela, and Priscilla. What Tammy has learned over the course of her life is what she is passing on to her family and the players on the basketball teams, past and present, mainly character, effort, and personal development. It doesn't matter, you know, who's watching, what's happening. You just do your best, and that's all that matters. There are always obstacles in life, but the question she poses to her athletes is how are you going to navigate your way through them, whether big or small? It's really little things that matter, because it's a perfect example of the little things that matter. If my father decided not to take me here, to bring me home, and said, made the decision, say, okay, I'm gonna bring her back with me. Not like the, not the other part of it, like having to tell his wife who has a family already, he already has a family. So that little thing was unbelievably important. So, you know, I translate those, those kinds of things to the players, to my, my students of, you know, those things matter. Work really hard in order to get where you want to be. You don't get there just solely on one big decision you make. It's all those small things and all those little decisions and those steps you have made to make that outcome happen. From being an athlete to being a coach, starting out as a softball, basketball, and soccer coach at Pinelands Middle School, before going on to coaching and teaching in Lawrence Township, taking time off to start a family, then going on to Southern Regional Middle School, and then to Barnegat High School for the 2013-14 school year, Nicolini has found ways to pay the lessons learned in life forward to the next generation of athletes and young women. It's not just teaching them about the sport, and I always tell the girls, especially coaching young women in, in and being a positive influence in their life. You want to teach them to be strong, independent women. Um, and you want to, you know, you want to take those kinds of things, not just what you learned in the basketball court, you know, how to be a part of something, being bigger than yourself. While her life is full of what ifs that she has been able to reflect on over the years, there is new information about her childhood in Vietnam she is beginning to learn for the first time, thanks to a woman who worked at the orphanage she was at as an infant and toddler, who later became a nun. We've been going back and forth via email, and she had said to me that um, she remembers on Sundays they would take the kids to the or from the orphanage, and they would because Da Nang is right near the sea. And what she said in the email, she remembers taking me to the sea on Sundays to go for a swim. So her and I are trying to connect. Um, we're doing it right now through email, and she actually had said to me that she has a lot of stories and that she'd like to share with me. The Vietnam War brought on a lot of hurt and death to American troops and hate and criticism, even when they came back home. But some like Staff Sergeant Charles Hoff, who passed away four years ago, found signs of life that they brought back home. For him, it was his daughter, a gift along with his other children, to the world. He was just one of the many American heroes who returned home to raise a family and help create a better world for all of us. For the Shore Sports Network, I'm Vin Ebenu.